let's talk about some of the symbology used in GD&T. Remember, GD&T is a language, so you have to learn the words. The way you put them together is also sort of like a language. You can rearrange things and make them mean a lot of different things. You can use different tolerances and different ways to achieve different results. But you have to at least for now know what all the symbols mean. And then later on, we'll get into how you mix them up and get different results. So this is a typical drawing. I've got a block with a hole in it. It's not fully dimensioned, just putting some stuff on here to show you. Let's get oriented. The first thing we're gonna look for on any drawing with GD&T on it are our datum feature symbols. Datum feature symbols are a little box with a letter in it connected to either an extension line, the surface of the part, or sometimes they'll be stuck to a feature control frame. Those are the three places they can be. The datum feature symbol indicates which physical portions of the part are going to serve as datum features. The datum features are going to simulate the actual datums. Datums are theoretical entities. They have to be developed by datum feature simulators. I know it seems like a lot, but it's really not that bad. All it means is that if we want to check this tolerance, we put this datum feature onto a flat plate. It serves as our datum feature sim simulator, and we're good to take our measurements. The same thing can happen, say we have a hole or a, a cylinder that's a datum feature. We might grab it with a mandrel or grab it with a chuck. Datum feature symbol leads to datum features, which is a physical part, portion of the part that develop datums, which are theoretical points, lines, or planes. The next thing we'll look for are basic dimensions. Basic dimensions are theoretically perfect. If you notice, there's no tolerance attached to a basic dimension. Now this is important because when you go to inspect this part, this won't be on your inspection sheet. You're inspecting the geometric tolerance. So when you see a basic dimension, you should automatically think, where's our next item? Where's the feature control frame? The feature control frame, number two here, holds all the data about our geometric tolerance. It tells us everything we need to know to make the part and set up that part for inspection. And by inference, we can kind of figure out what the part is going to be used for, or at least how it fits at assembly. So our feature control frame has a lot of stuff in it, and I'll go over that separately, but it's going to tell us what the tolerance is, what geometric characteristic it's dealing with, the amount of tolerance, and what datums it refers to. So this is a profile with a tolerance of 20 thousandths to datum A. When we inspect this part, datum A has to be against something like a surface plate, and then we just measure how far the surface is away from it. Inside, the feature control frame are gonna be. So our feature control frame is going to look something like this. This is a rather complicated one. Sometimes they're much simpler, but this is gonna allow us to talk about what each of the compartments is. The first compartment always is gonna hold a geometric characteristic symbol. There are 12 symbols in the current 2018 standard, and then two more symbols that were discontinued in 2018. But we're in the 2009, 1994, 1982, and I think the one before. So concentricity and symmetry are still out there. So it's good to know what they mean. You need to memorize these. If you have a job interview and they ask you if you know anything about GD&T, they're gonna ask you what some of these mean. Okay? For now, it's good enough, good enough just to know what they represent. 
So we have flatness, straightness, circularity, cylindricity, parallelism, perpendicularity, angularity, circular runout, total, total runout, profile of a surface, profile of a line, position, symmetry, concentricity. So in the feature control frame, any of those can exist right here. That lets you know what you're looking for when you set up to inspect. The next compartment is gonna hold the tolerance. This first thing is gonna be the shape of the tolerance zone. It can only be nothing, which is just a flat zone, or diameter symbol, which indicates a cylindrical tolerance zone, or a spherical diameter, which indicates a spherical tolerance zone. You won't see that very often though. Next is the actual amount of tolerance. So it depends which shape of tolerance zone you have. Okay. If it's 30 thou and you have this diameter, you've got a round tolerance zone. The diameter of the tolerance zone is 30 thousandths. If you have a flatness tolerance with a tolerance zone of 30 thou, then it's just the distance between two parallel planes in which the part, the surface, the surface of the part must lie. So the difference between two planes, diameter of the tolerance zone. The next area is our material condition modifier. So it can be three things, MMC, LMC, or regardless of feature size. This leads us to rule number two, which is a lot easier to remember than rule number one. If there's nothing here, that tolerance applies no matter how big or small the actual feature came in at. So if this is a hole, if the hole comes in at 1.02, you have 30 thou of location tolerance. If it comes in at 0.98, you have 30 thou of location tolerance. What this MMC does is read it like this. You have 30 thou only when the part is at MMC. So for a hole, the MMC is the smallest hole, 0.98. So at 0.98, this feature comes in there, you have 30 thou of locational tolerance. If the hole comes in larger, remember, the tolerance applies only at MMC. If the hole comes in larger, you get more location tolerance equal to that departure. So if this hole comes in at 1.02, that's a 40 thou difference from the smallest it can be, the MMC, to what it is. You can add that to your location tolerance. So a hole that comes in at 1.02, <clears throat> you got 40 thou of bonus tolerance. Add it to this, you have 70 thou of location tolerance. But it's important to know that this MMC is almost always a good thing. It almost always means more tolerance. You just have to think about it, okay? The next area here are datum feature references. This tells us what order we need to place the part in our inspection setup. And if we're gonna inspect it a certain way, if the part in a certain position, should also make it in that same position. So it's designed a way, it's machined the same way, and it's inspected the same way. All this stuff is just instructions on the best way to accomplish that. So let's take a quick look at how this works, how the setup works. I've got a simple part, got a block with a hole in it. Datum A is this big flat surface. Datum B is this side. Datum C is this side. Remember the datum feature symbol indicates which physical features are the datums. In this case, all of our datums are surfaces. They won't always be surfaces though. This, our feature control frame, tells us what the tolerance on that hole is, what the locational tolerance. This right here gives us the size tolerance. So we're splitting up that size and form and location. So we read this, we have a positional tolerance, 
with a cylindrical tolerance zone of 30 thousandths, but only at MMC in relation to A, primary, B, secondary, and C, tertiary. So we can imagine we have a tolerance zone where that hole should be. I forgot to put basic dimensions in there, but it's not too big of a deal for now. So remember the basic dimensions come from our datums. We measure the tolerance zone from our basic dimensions, which lead to our datums. So the actual axis of the hole that is made has to fall within this 30 thousandths, but only at MMC. If the hole comes in big, it can wander around. 